Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Today, I'm going to discuss with you the Chelsea midfield. Moises Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, Conor Gallagher, the injuries that have seen Romeo Lavia play just 32 minutes of football for Chelsea all season long. But before we do that, can we just uh, raise a glass for a second? This is um, actually plastic, but like, you know, that strong kind of plastic. It's got water in it, so nothing alcoholic, but we're raising a glass to Thomas Tuchel, who knocked out Arsenal in the Champions League last night with an absolute game for the ages. Bayern Munich defending themselves through into the Champions League semi-finals. Arsenal are gone, and Tony Rudiger, who not only was monstrous at the back for Real Madrid, but you see what he was doing to the Real Madrid goalkeeper, telling the keeper where Kovacic was going to go. Real Madrid knock out Man City, and it is the 2021 Chelsea dream team of Tuchel and Rudiger that made it happen. So if that isn't a good enough reason to smack a like on today's video, then, well, I don't know what is. It's been an absolutely... Brilliant week here on GBFC. I've loved every second of it. You guys seem to be reveling in the 6-0 win. And it feels good to be going into an FA Cup semi-final this weekend with a bit of excitement. And I've kind of... If you watch yesterday's video where the title of that video is Pochettino, You've Gained My Respect, it's kind of shifted my mental side of following Chelsea this week where... Instead of it being a bit of a chore, the build-up to a game has been very much like a, oh, God, we've got to play again at the weekend, and how bad's it going to be? Now, after winning 6-0, it feels as though we've got something to really grip hold of and get excited about when it comes to that game this weekend. Now, the recent news regarding Enzo Fernandez is that he's been suffering all season long with a hernia. And a hernia that is obviously something that you can sometimes play through if you're aware that it's there. And again, I don't have a degree in anything, let alone hernias. So if it's there, sometimes you can play through it. And apparently he's been taking pain injections in the build-up to matches, which can enable him to actually get through the games. And then it's got to a point where the pain has become too much. And that's why he was out at the weekend, missed the Everton game. And there's a lot of questions about whether or not he'll actually be fit to face Manchester City. Now, the reason I want to discuss the Chelsea midfield today is if you watched my today's TikTok video, or I posted it also to Twitter, YouTube Shorts, and also Instagram, I'm comparing Declan Rice and Moises Caicedo because, well, Arsenal, they almost knocked themselves out of the title race at the weekend, and they're out of the Champions League now, so... Everyone's saying, well, they spent 100 million on Rice and that was supposed to be the, the you know, the stopgap to get them trophies and whatever, but they're not going to win anything again. So a lot of people are also bringing up the fact that statistically, if you look at Moises Caicedo this season, I'll put the graphic up on the screen that I used in the short. You can see here that in terms of what a defensive midfielder should be, Moises Caicedo's numbers are actually really good. Now, there's also stats in football, but there's also those intangible things. There are the things that you maybe don't necessarily see that Caicedo seemingly hasn't been as to the naked eye this season. It's not looked as though he's been fluid the way that he was at Brighton. We very rarely, if ever, saw him make mistakes that would lead to goals or mistakes that would make you sit there and be like, 100 million. Do you know what I mean? Like, There's been times this season where... Moises Caicedo hasn't looked like a £100 million player, but overall, I would say that the money that Chelsea have spent on him was, again, something for potential. You guys that have been long-term followers of GBFC, I always say that potential can be used as a word to describe a player and to kind of let them off the hook a little bit until they turn around 25, 26 years old. From that point, it's either you're going to, you either got it or you've got to get there soon or we can't keep talking about potential, but with Caicedo, there is still massive potential. Now, I'm going to throw a little curveball out there here because Enzo Fernandez, I think, is a phenomenal footballer. But when we think about these injuries that he's been playing through, and he's obviously played so much football 
since the World Cup, he's still incredibly young. The transition to the Premier League, it's a high-octane, quick, fast league. And Enzo isn't necessarily the quickest player. He covers a lot of ground, but quite often he looks like he's quite sluggish. That's my thoughts on Enzo Fernandez. Now, this hernia issue is an explanation as to why that could have been the case. But at the same time, I think the reason that Moises Caicedo may not have actually been as brilliant as he could have been for Chelsea this season is because he's been having to overcompensate the amount of work that he needs to try and do to cover for Enzo Fernandez. Now, the Everton game is an eye-opening one because when you see Conor Gallagher deployed a bit deeper alongside Caicedo, I think Gallagher had a really good game in that role. I think we can never doubt Conor Gallagher's work ethic, the amount of running that he does for his teammates and for Chelsea, and the amount of fight and passion that he shows is once again something that doesn't always shine through statistically. But with Gallagher being a runner, it allowed Caicedo to actually control the pace and the tempo of the midfield. If you think back to Cole Palmer's first goal, it is brilliant fast-paced movement between Malo Gusto and Moises Caicedo. Caicedo covering ground quickly, looking fast. And I think that that's something that we maybe haven't seen as often this season. I think Caicedo's had to play a lot of football. And I think after watching that performance against Everton, comparing the work rate of Conor Gallagher to that of Enzo Fernandez, Enzo works really hard, but he's often not quick enough to get stuff done. He's often better when he's on the ball, when he can kind of dictate things with the ball at his feet, as opposed to tracking back and winning it back. So I think that's another reason why we've seen Pochettino experiment at times this season, with it not necessarily being like a Caicedo-Enzo pivot, but giving Enzo that ability to get forward a bit more. So I think when I look at Caicedo, and I do think he's gone under the radar, I think because of that price tag and because Chelsea have been in the mid-table, now we're slowly creeping up to eighth in the Premier League, I think it's been so easy for rival fans and the football media to criticise Caicedo. And when you've got high-profile mistakes, it kind of validates all of that critique. But I would say... I think he's been good throughout the whole season. And again, it's a new club. He's got such an important role. There was such a huge weight on his shoulders. And I think moving forward, there's a big question here about whether or not an Enzo Caicedo pivot is actually something that's going to work. And the conclusion that I've made is that I don't think it's Caicedo and Enzo. And I don't think it's Caicedo and Gallagher. That leads me into Romeo Lavia who has obviously been incredibly unlucky this season with injuries. He's played 32 minutes of football for Chelsea. Chelsea have obviously spent a lot of money on him because he's young, and that is the, the project that we're working on. We're buying young players to, I don't know, build a team for the future or make a load of profit. But like, if they're not playing, Lavi is not worth the $52 million that we spent on him right now because he's not been playing football, so he can't have gone up in value. So I really want to see... Lavia and Caicedo as a partnership because I think there's got to be a way that we can advance Enzo and define, refine that role that he needs to do a lot more. That being said also, shooting wise, he's been poor this season, Enzo. I think when it comes to like those pass percentages and getting the ball into the final third, he's obviously really high with those stats as well. But I think there's a big question that Chelsea need to ask. And I wouldn't say it's a priority because I'd say there's definitely a striker that needs to be bought. Probably a centre-back as well. If we can't rely on Wesley Fofana to be fit. Maybe a goalie and maybe a long-term solution to the left wing. If Pochettino stays as a manager and he's not convinced by Mudrik or Sterling, whatever. But I do think this midfield dilemma is a serious dilemma. And I think basically the point of this video is to ask you guys in the comments, which central midfielder do you think should be Caicedo's partner? Because I think Caicedo needs a partner in there. And I think Enzo's a quality footballer. And I think Gallagher is a quality footballer also. But I don't think either of them are the right mould 
for who needs to play alongside Caicedo. Now, I'm going to throw out a shout. Jao Polina from Fulham, I think, is a decent player. He's got height. He covers ground quickly. More than happy to tackle, which would then give Caicedo the opportunity to do that role that he did at Brighton a bit more, which is distribution. He's got a great pass to the ball, great vision, trying to advance the ball into the final third. And from what I saw against Everton, with Gallagher actually doing the dogged work, I think comparatively, Caicedo's got to do too much to cover how sluggish Enzo may have been at times this season. This is just my personal perspective, and the majority of this is from the eye test of what I've seen throughout the whole season. If you disagree with me, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to know why. And again, I think we've, we're blessed right now to have quality footballers. And bringing it back to what we said a week ago about Chelsea not looking like a team, Pochettino needing to identify a team spirit and continuity. Continuity has to come next season by having a midfield that works, having there be less holes in this Chelsea team so that when we're looking defensively weak, we're not getting counted every five minutes and conceding stupid goals. We're scoring so many now. Nicholas Jackson, I think, is really becoming a quality footballer. Cole Palmer is world-class Ballon d'Or contention. And I'm not lying. Seriously, he's been that good so far this year. But let me know your thoughts on the midfield in the comments down below. With Enzo going through this, and at the moment he might need to have surgery on these hernias, whatever, obviously we wish him a speedy recovery. But I do think there is a massive shout this weekend. Apparently Enzo is going to have another injection to be able to play City. But is it these injections that he's having before the games that is making him not quite as quick and sharp as he was, say, at the World Cup, which made us spend the money on him? I would be, I'd be keeping a close eye on this one if I was the Chelsea medical staff. If I was Enzo, and I would say from what we saw against Everton, Moises Caicedo and Gallagher as a pivot actually works. It really does. Put Palmer as a number 10. See what we can do there. I'm going to be posting another video tomorrow, which is my preview for the Man City FA Cup game. So absolutely make sure you guys tune in for that video because this is fascinating. City knocked out by Real Madrid last night. Are they going to be so up for it that Chelsea have now got their work out? Probably. I'm not going to lie. Or is this going to have shattered them and Cole Palmer and Chelsea and Pochettino can smell blood? It's a fascinating cup tie. Let me know your thoughts on today's comments in the comments down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come on, you blues.